Bring Jesus on! There's only one decision! Why, why, Tuckini? Come on, We've got some very impressive speakers here who've come to show their support for Julian Assange. I want to introduce the first of them. He's the Labour MP for Hazen Harlington. He's worked tirelessly to support Julian Assange. He's begun a demand for an inquiry into the way in which the CPS destroyed its entire stock of emails in the Swedish case. He's done unprecedented parliamentary work. Please give a warm welcome for John McDonald. Let me just explain why I'm here very briefly. I'm the secretary of the National Union Journalist Parliamentary Group. Our role in Parliament, it's a cross-party group, our role in Parliament is to be the voice of journalists. So when this case first emerged, it was fairly obvious what it was aimed at in our view. What Julian Assange is, is a investigative journalist who, exactly as someone has just shouted, heroically, heroically has stood by the hand highest standards of journalism. What is journalism about is reporting the truth. It's about, by reporting the truth, holding power to account. And that's what Julian did. He identified war crimes being committed, solid evidence of war crimes. And he did as every good journalist did, investigated them, researched them, demonstrated the evidence was irrefutable, and he published them. Yes. And for that, for that, the state, the US in particular, but other states as well, have sought to repress his ability to operate as a honest and professional journalist. And my God, he's suffered as a result of that. I visited him in Belmarsh prison. If you've not been in Belmarsh, let me tell you, I've been there a few times to visit constituents. It's a brutal and harsh regime. When I visited Julian last time, there'd already been a suicide on his wing. Self-harm, mental breakdowns, mental health problems. He's endured all that with courage and determination. For that alone, he's won my admiration. But also in recent, this last few weeks, as a result of another brilliant journalist, an Italian journalist called Stefania Morizzi, remember that name. For years, for years, she's been working and researching on this case. And she was putting freedom of information questions to the Crown Prosecution Service. And then discovered, first of all, discovered evidence of the Crown Prosecution Service interfering in the Swedish case in order to secure Julian's extradition to Sweden and then clearly on to America. It was deliberate interference. But then after that, when the first evidence was found and she approached me because she was having problems getting those responses to the Freedom of Information questions, I put down on her behalf those questions again. And then we discovered, having found the first evidence of interference, then we discovered the Crown Prosecution Service has deleted the emails of the solicitor who was dealing with the case and then couldn't even give us the rationale for that or the rules by which emails are deleted in these cases. So what we've done now, on a cross-party basis again, myself, Jeremy Corbyn, David Davis, former Conservative Minister, Caroline Lucas from the Green Party, we've submitted a quest to the Justice Select Committee in the House of Commons to investigate, launch a short, sharp investigation into the role of the Crown Prosecution Service in this case. Because already, already as we've seen, Stefania's evidence demonstrates interference in this case 
And I think that interferes clearly with the motive of the extradition of Julian to the US. Now let me say this, I believe like you, if Julian is extradited, I believe his life is at risk. I do not believe he will be safe, and I do not believe, actually I don't believe any of the assurances that we've been given so far. So I'm hoping today the court will decide the assurances are not good enough, and my view, I think they should then say Julian should be released and go free and join his family again. But let me say this again, just in my role with regard to the National Union of Journalists. This case is globally important. Why? Because it's trying to say to journalists across the globe, report the truth and this is what will happen to you. So just as those tragedies in Gaza at the moment, 140 journalists being killed by the IDF, the message is going out there and if from, as a result of this case to all journalists, you report the truth and we'll come for you. So we're not just standing up for Julian Assange today, we're standing up for journalism, but journalism is one of the foundation stones of democracy. So we're standing up for our freedoms, our civil liberties and our democracy. Solidarity to Julian, solidarity to this campaign. And let's hope we win today but if the court doesn't make the right decision, we'll be back until we secure his release and our freedoms once again. Solidarity. For 230 years, the First Amendment to the United States Constitution has guaranteed free expression and a free press. It safeguarded the New York Times, the Washington Post and countless other publications in the United States and you might imagine that it would also offer protection to Julian Assange but sadly not everybody in the United States thinks that Mike Pompeo when he was director of the CIA since then Secretary of State said that the First Amendment wouldn't apply to Julian Assange because he is not an American citizen what a despicable point of view from a country that claims to lead the free world. Quite rightly, Judges Sharp and Johnson, when they last met, said that this was a question that needed to be decisively answered. They needed to know from the United States government, yes or no, would the First Amendment protect free expression in the case of Julian Assange? So they sought an assurance. Unfortunately, the assurance that has come back is anything other than clear. Where they might have offered a straightforward yes or no, they said Julian Assange may apply for protection and it will then be at the discretion of the court. So what Judges Johnson and Sharp have to determine is whether that is a promise that we can trust. And not only must they examine the words of that promise, which I would say are dangerously equivocal, they must also consider who it is that has made that assurance. It's an administration that we know conspired to steal nappies to try and establish the paternity of a child. It's, it's an administration that relentlessly bugged Julian Assange's meetings with his lawyers. It's an administration that deployed countless officer hours within the CIA plotting to murder Julian Assange on the streets of London. A plan they only abandoned late in the day when the MI6 said actually we're not so keen on political assassinations in our own capital city. So the question, the question that the judges must determine is can we trust an administration that acts in such a way? And I say no! No, no. Let's do that again. No, no, no. The only option at this stage to safeguard a free press and to safeguard free expression is to free Julian Assange. Let's encourage the court to do that. Free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange.
free Julian Assange. Julian Assange. Now let me tell you, whatever is the decision, whatever is the decision today, and I hope it's the right one, but we must stand resolute, whatever the decision is, to continue to defend the free expression, to continue to defend Julian Assange. I give you my assurance that the National Union of Journalists and the International Federation of Journalists will be side by side in that fight wherever it takes us. Free Julian Assange! There's so many of us here who've been doing this, campaigning to get Julian released, campaigning for his freedom, campaigning for freedom of speech, campaigning for the right of the public to know for 12 years. And today is the day we finally secure the release of Julian Assange. In the last judgment, the court asked for two assurances from the United States government. They asked for an assurance on the death penalty, which they received. They asked for an assurance that he would not be debarred from seeking the, the protection of the First Amendment on the grounds of his nationality. Now, the court did not ask for an assurance that the First Amendment argument would prevail over the so-called national security argument. Although when your national security apparently relies on concealing war crimes, you have to ask what national security really means at all. But they did not ask for an assurance that the First Amendment argument would prevail over all other arguments. They did ask specifically for an assurance that the First Amendment would not be debarred on the grounds of nationality. And that assurance has not been given. Exactly. What they have said is he can seek to argue oh. for First Amendment protection. Oh. Now, when the court has asked specifically for an assurance, and when the court has blatantly not been given that assurance, if the court still allows the extradition to go ahead, that is an end to any pretense of the rule of law in this country. That is an end to any claim of intellectual integrity on the part of the legal system. That would be an end to the self-respect of these grand Victorian buildings, this tremendous mockery of power where the authority of the state is stamped upon the people. We will see it all for what it is, a callous abuse of power and a charade of justice. But let me tell you this, I do not think we will see that today. I think today we will win because I think yes! for the court to grant extradition when the assurance they have insisted upon has not been given would be such a mockery, would be such a disgrace, would be such a humiliation. It is a step too far, even for this institution. I think today is a stay. We see Julian free at last. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming and for the millions of people around the world who are supporting Julian and protesting. Where is it? We hope that the courts do the right thing today and find in Julian's favour. But if they don't, we will seek an emergency injunction from the European Court of Human Rights. Thank you. This is Cathy Bogan for Consortium News. I'm outside the Royal Courts of Justice and I'm here with 
Emmy Baslin from the Committee to Defend Julian Assange. Emmy, tell us what's been going on um, since 6.30 this morning and what are you expecting today? We were um, here nice and early in support of Julian Assange as per usual. Uh, in my 12th year of support and solidarity actions in support of uh, the Wikileaks publisher. Uh, it's the final court hearing for Julian Assange. It's likely to be the, the final one. We're hoping for the best outcome. We're hoping that finally the judges will free Julian Assange and free, support freedom of the press and everything that's good about Wikileaks. It's a, been a very, very hard fight to put across what is at stake here. The very democracy that we rely on relies on a free press. If people, anyone, including media organizations, is not free to publish on the internet truthful information for the public good, our democracy is corrupt and corroded. The judges inside the High Court today have to decide whether our society is going forwards or are they signing away the freedoms, hard fought freedoms of generations behind us. Julian Assange is a symbol, is a symbol for press freedom, but he's also a human being. And we're here supporting the man, the husband, the father, the son. Thank you, Consortium News, for being with us and reporting the truth. Free Julian Assange! Free, free Julian now! Free, free! Free the truth! Free, free Julian now! Free, free! Free the truth! So what brings you here today, madam? Um, I wanted to show my support for Julian Assange. I feel very strongly that he must not be extradited today and must be free. Right. Um, and do you have a feeling about the way it's going to go today? I am thinking as positively as I can and hoping for the best. Right. And what would be the best for you? That Julian Assange is free today. Today? And actually today. Walk, walks, through the, yes. walks through that gate and onto yes. that? Yes. And speaks to us. Yes. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, such a, a, such a dramatic contrast of possibilities today, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. So, he could be in a, on a plane this evening. Yeah, that thought terrifies me, and that's partly why I'm here as well, because um, if, if in any way this protest can sway opinion at all, that's why I'm here, that's why I came down. Right. I actually worked with Julian and WikiLeaks on the release of the Guantanamo files back in 2011. Wow, okay. So uh, I'm Andy Worthington, I'm an investigative journalist and activist, so it's crucially important to me that, um, that he isn't um, prosecuted unfairly for releasing information like those files, um, which were extremely significant in the history of what we know about Guantanamo. This was um, classified but relevant, vitally relevant information yes. hidden by the United States government, leaked by Chelsea Manning, exposed by WikiLeaks. I'm very proud to have worked on that. And, um, you know, until Julian is free, then, you know, then I will keep fighting for this. Right. Okay, um, have you managed to visit him in Belmarsh? I haven't visited him in Belmarsh. So what's your feeling about today? What, if, you, if you had to put money on it, where, where would you go? I don't know. I mean, it's a farce. This has been going on for years now. It's the illusion of there being some kind of legal process, right. but actually they're just um, endlessly arguing and going round and round on aspects of the US-UK extradition treaty, right. which is the problem. Yes. Um, Julian Assange didn't step foot in the United States. This has nothing to do with the United States. Right. Um, so the entire extradition treaty, to me, is broken and not fit yeah. for purpose. Well, yeah. If he committed a crime, then he should be prosecuted for committing That's a crime right. here. That's something I don't quite understand how they managed to sidestep that treaty and so blatantly disregard it. Really, when the treaty came in, all that the United States had to say to the United Kingdom was, uh, this is who we want, send him over to us. They didn't have to provide any justification for it. And actually what's happened in the years since is that um, the British in particular have realized that perhaps it needed tweaking a bit. You're trying to tweak something 
that, that isn't fit for purpose in the first place. Right. So the whole thing is outrageous as far as I can see. Okay, okay thank you much. And will you be, will you be reporting on this, this event today? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, where, where can we, where, where will that come out? Uh, you can find it on my website, so that's andyworthington.co.uk. Thank you so much, thank you. Apparently he's got um, a thing to go to European court. That's right, European Court for Human Rights. Yeah. Which means they keep him in prison again That's right, until yeah. that, and that could be years or whatever. That's which right. is probably their option. Yeah, yeah. Because they're, they're obliged to do that, I think. That's right, That's right. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's also a question whether Britain's going to re recognise the judgment, because the whole Brexit thing is a lot of right wing people in government that don't like the uh, European Court of Human Rights. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it's, it's got well, it's, the name's there, rights, people's rights. They don't yeah. like that, they don't want that. Exactly. Yeah, okay. it's disgusting, absolutely yeah. disgusting. The problem is that people don't know about it because it's never on the news. Right. Like we was at the Palestine march yesterday, day before, yeah. and because it's on the news, people know. People yeah. know. If he was on the news as much as he should be, yeah. then people would know. That's right. Where's the BBC? Where are they? Oh, they're not here, no. I haven't seen them. Haven't seen yeah, them. exactly. Yeah. It's all corruption, absolute corruption. And we, we sit there and we go, oh, look at China, oh, look at Iran, do, 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 do. look in the mirror, mate, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Yeah. It's disgusting. Right. It makes me really angry. Okay. Well, That's why I ain't got no air. <laughs> you never know. Who knows? You might get a result today. Well, oh, I hope so, mate. I, I can't see it, can you? I think they'll just keep the can down the road again, mate. Tonight. Exactly. Just keep him in, keep him in, keep him in. Yeah. I mean, then the other people, well, at least he's got the, the thing to go to Europe. Doesn't matter. He's not out. He should be out. The problem is, I think, if they let him out, they can't let him out because he's, he says he's going to carry on. Yeah. Now, if he said, "Okay, I'll shut," and he was made to be quiet, right. Right. then somebody else could start. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Sir. All right, nice one. Right. Consult him new. Check it out. Yeah, I will. I'll have a look. Yeah. Okay, yeah thank nice. you. Cheers. Uh, by all means. Get your beautiful watercolour in there. <laughs> oh, you're very kind, young man. Is this something you do a lot? Yeah, are you? Watercolours at protests? Oh, I do picket lines and protests. Fantastic. Oh, amazing. Uh, this is me. Okay, all right. That's Let's the five again. <laughs> you're very kind, so young man. Light. There we go, Drawing the Line exhibition by picket line artist Inga Boystrand. Beautiful. What's your feeling about the way it could go today? Well, I don't like to get any hope up. I, I, I think it's likely whatever happens, he'll just spend more time in jail because it seems that seems to be the process. You know, the process is the punishment. Um, they're breaking all their own laws just to keep him in. Um, and it's been five years now, totally innocent, uncharged, unsentenced, unconvicted. It's criminal what they're doing and they seem determined to keep on doing it so i'll be very su surprised if there's any other change than that obviously i hope obviously we all hope you know because he's not doing well in jail he really is not doing well I hope it's not surprising you know it's a really bad jail but i think they're just doing it uh, one because the process is the punishment and two it warns all other journalists don't release that information because look what happens. You know, they haven't even got to prosecute you. They'll just keep you in jail anyway until you die. We have, it's a political prisoner, basically. And our government in this country points at other countries as political prisoners like it's a bad thing, as if we don't do that ourselves. Of course, we're the world's worst. Us in America, we are awful. And I'm totally embarrassed to have been born here. It is shameful. I don't know what we do, man. Revolution. We all build guillotines. I have no idea, but we need to do something okay. because it's getting worse. I'm very old and I'm nearly dead, but I've got grandkids on this planet, and these people are just going to eat my grandkids. I mean, it, where does it stop? We're just food and fodder, and we're not needed anymore. Okay. So they don't care about us. We should stop caring about them. Okay. Thank you. Viva Revolution. Yes. Indeed. For the past 23 years. I've investigated, researched, and written about the global arms trade. And all of that work is dependent on whistleblowers <coughs> and sources. When Julian Assange created WikiLeaks, 
and reveal overwhelming evidence of war crimes committed by the United States and other Western governments, he changed the game. And that's why he's in the situation that he is in. Because the information that he has put into the public domain threatens the imperialism, the warmongering, and the brutality of our own governments. But in addition to that, it's important to understand that what Julian has done has threatened the very basis of our politics, which is secrecy and corruption. The global arms trade accounts for 40% of all corruption in all world trade. And much of that corruption doesn't only go to the key political players in Saudi Arabia or Israel or other countries around the world. Some of that corruption returns into our political system. And it funds our two major parties and it funds our politicians like Tony Blair who have made themselves who have made themselves multi, multi-millionaires through selling corrupt arms deals around the, around the world and associating with British and American defense companies and the most autocratic, undemocratic regimes on the planet. And the reality is that Julian Assange is a threat to all of that. It is a threat to the way in which our tax pounds are illegitimately used to continue to commit genocide in Gaza, to continue to violate international humanitarian law in Yemen and other parts of the world. So the reality is today and until he is free, we are all Julian Assange. And if they continue to, si to silence Julian, we will be his voice. So we say to those judges today, we say to the governments of Britain and the United States of America, free the truth, free Julian Assange. Julian has won his right to an appeal against the extradition.
judges reached the right decision. We spent a long time hearing the United States putting lipstick on a pig, but the judges did not buy it. As a family, we are relieved, but how long can this go on? The United States should read the situation and drop this case now. Now is the moment to do it. Just abandon this shameful attack on journalists, on the press and the public that has been going on for 14 years. This case is shameful and it is taking an enormous toll on Julian. He is under enormous pressure. He has been in Belmarsh prison for over five years. It's been two years, two years since the order was issued. This case should just be abandoned. The Biden administration should have dropped it from day one. But now is a right moment for the Biden administration to drop it. So please, those in the United States who are in a power to make a decision, please just drop this case now. Don't let this go on any longer. Thank you. It's because of people like you that we're finally seeing a glimpse of justice. The sun doesn't shine all that much in London, but today a glimpse, a sun ray of justice finally, finally we saw it. And it will mark a path to victory. We said, of course, it shouldn't have taken more than five minutes in this courtroom for the judges to see that the United States government was not going to give Julian any assurances. And they were discriminated against him. They would not give him First Amendment protection. It took a couple of hours, but the judges did come to the just and the right conclusion. Julian Assange has now the right to appeal. And that in itself should send the right message across the sea to the Biden administration. Look there, you're on a losing ground. You're losing this case. If you want to save any form of face, drop the case against Julian Assange. Drop it right now. It is the only, only decision that can save face in the U.S. and of course it will save the future of journalism which are put, is put at risk in this case. So join me in the call across the sea. Let it be heard. You are losing. Drop the case. Yes, it's quite something. It's quite something when one of the highest courts in this country says to the American government, we just don't believe you. Right. Yeah. I'd like to welcome to the stage Rebecca Vincent from Reporters Without Borders. She's been campaigning all the way through this. Her organization has thrown their weight into campaigning for Julian Assange. She's been in court on every previous hearing and today. Please give Rebecca Vincent a very warm welcome. So this is very good news, and let's take it because we've been waiting a long time for any good news in this case. This is a victory. This means that the issues at the very heart of this case, freedom of expression, press freedom, will get consideration by these courts. It's been far too long to get to this point, but it is so important. 
Of no, course, this remains go. a political case. We have this hope that the UK courts will prevent extradition, and that after today is still very much possible. But we hope across the ocean that there are some very uncomfortable people in Washington DC looking at London today and thinking very hard about where to go next because this does not have to play its way through the courts. We do not have to continue to do this month after month. President Biden could make his legacy to be the president who stops this now, who doesn't let it go. should not be in prison in the UK, in the US, anywhere for a single day more. We should mention that he wasn't well enough to come to court today. That is very worrying. So let's not lose sight of what's happening to him himself. So I hope that this crowd here today, that the attention that the world will pay to this really important decision this morning, that they'll also not lose sight of where Julian Assange is, which is in a high security UK prison where he's been for more than five years for publishing information in the public interest. That is unacceptable. So we hope to see you back outside this court. As soon as this hearing is called, we will be here. We will continue to follow this case closely. It is one of our top priorities because of the dangerous implications it has for journalism and press freedom around the world. We will keep up the campaign to free Assange. I'm somebody who's been working tirelessly to free Julian Assange. I've said this before, he's been a former ambassador for this country. But that work pales into insignificance in my view compared to the work he's done for the ordinary people of this country and to sustain press freedom in his reporting and his work for the Assange campaign. Please welcome Craig Murray. ago I told you today was going to be a good day and today has been an excellent day. We haven't got Julian out just yet but we are on the way to getting Julian out. We are on the way to victory in this battle. The court granted leave to appeal on two grounds today. Leave to appeal on grounds of discrimination by nationality and leave to appeal on the grounds of freedom of expression. And we are seeing at last an acknowledgement of the crucial importance of freedom of speech, freedom of information and of the public's right to know. And those are the grounds on which we will win this case. It's been a hell of a struggle. It's been a long, long struggle. I see people standing here who I met 12, 14 years ago, standing in the pouring rain outside the Ecuadorian embassy. We've grown a bit older together. I don't know about you, but I've got better looking. And we are still going, and we are going on. And we were fighting what seemed like a losing battle. We were fighting against the odds, but we have turned around public opinion. We have turned around legal opinion. We are turning the world for the better, and we are going forward to flee during the search. Thank you. The last speaker to you today has done more than any other single individual in more difficult circumstances than any other single individual to make sure that the case of Julian Assange is won and that the freedom of the press is defended. Please welcome Stella Assange. Thank you. I want to be very clear. 
Today marks a turning point. We went into court and we sat and heard the United States fumbling through their arguments, trying to paint lipstick on a pig. They are pigs. Well, the judges were not convinced. Everyone can see what's going on here. The United States case is offensive. It offends our democratic principles. It offends our right to know. It is an attack on journalists everywhere. We are relieved as a family that the courts took the right decision today. But how long can this go on for? Our eldest son just turned seven. All their memories of their father are in the visiting hall of Belmarsh Prison. Shame! And as the case goes along, it becomes clearer and clearer to everyone that Julian is in prison for doing good journalism. For exposing corruption, for exposing the violations on innocent people in abusive wars for which there is impunity and on top of that impunity, they've gone after the man who put that impunity onto the public record. No good deed will go unpunished by the... The Biden whistle. administration should distance itself from this shameful prosecution. It should have done so from day one. But it may be running out of time to do the right thing. Everyone can see what should be done here. Yes. Julian must be freed. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. The case should be abandoned. Yes. He should be compensated. Yes. He should be given the Nobel Prize. Yes. And she, he should walk freely with the sand beneath his feet. Yes. He should be able to swim in the sea again. Free Assange! Free Assange! Free Assange! Kathy Bogan for Consortium News, and I'm here with a victorious looking Kristen Raffinson. Tell us about what went on there in the courtroom. Well, it was such a victorious moment to finally, to finally get uh, a glimpse of hope into the, this case and a glimpse of victory. And I think it is a turning point in the entire fight for the courts here in London to acknowledge how serious this case is. And the signaling to the United States government is so clear. You know, if we scrape away the fancy word and, and, the, and the, the horse hair wigs and the niceties in the text, the signaling is clear to the United States government. We don't believe your assurances. We don't believe your documents and promises. You are about to discriminate against an individual and we are not going along with it. So that should be enough for the Biden administration to consider. You're on a losing path. This is now on our side, and the clock is ticking on the chessboard for the Biden administration. Every day that goes on without this case being dropped is a risk of further humiliation for the Biden administration, because it's now become a humiliation on a grand scale and will just become bigger. And he needs to say, enough is enough, drop the case. Do you think that this is two hurdles, as in the prosecutor could still raise 
the issue of excluding Assange, robbing him of his rights, but the court, after that, the court could further decide. Um, is that a hurdle that will never be overcome by the United States? I don't see how they, how they will. Uh, let's face it, the appeal now will be on the points that was discussed this morning. Yeah. All the arguments for and against have been presented. And the, the court has now actually has, has weighed these arguments and come to the conclusion that the, uh, the, the arguments the U.S. government has are very lightweight and, uh, and are losing. So in the appeal process, should be, it should be an open and shut case because all the arguments have been made. What else are they going to come up with? They have basically said that, no, we're not going to grant him First Amendment protection because it's an Australian. Are they going to reverse that just to, you know, be, before... Uh, because if they do that, they will have to say, well, why? Well, because it's a journalist. That's why they've been saying that he is not all alone. So it's, it's, it, it, it may have been a small day in court here, but the, the signal is huge. And it's a signal that gives us hope that we are now on the path towards victory and for Julian's freedom. Christian Hutchinson, thank you very much. Thanks Congratulations. For being here, thank you, thank you. You may see your old buddy again soon. <laughs> I will, I hope. A free man. Yeah, yes. Free man. <laughs>